no! Fast charging is more expensive than the refueling diesel. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> no, but you know, this is the, how the story goes that we hear from time to time about uh, in the YouTube comments or some articles uh, and uh, maybe other places from social media. People claim that, you know, the advantage of uh, EV is gone now, right? Well, is it really gone, you know? Uh, how does it work, really? Uh, and my claim is that uh, these people, these journalists, they are, um, how they put this in a nice way, uh, they are clueless about how stuff works. You know, they, they toss out this, this data and they confuse people, especially people who don't own EVs. And they, you know, they mislead them into thinking that, oh, you know, you know the, the point of buying EV is not there anymore because it's so expensive to charge them, right? <laughs> so in this video, I will explain how it works. Uh, when we, okay, let's just take some examples. So for example, um, last year, uh, Fortum, they raised the price on, uh, on some stretches by 60%. So the old price was 2.5 nook per uh, minute and it, they set it to four nook per minute. But if you look closer, you'll see that it only applies to some stretches. It was between Rena and Kvikne, you guys know that stretch in Österdal, and then Mandal to Olgor. So a very limited stretch, and actually they did it um, almost like um, to protest against high uh, peak power price because, yeah, that's a different story. They have to pay for, for power also, not for only for energy. Uh, but you see, if you do the math, that uh, the price for electricity around there will be as high as 5.3 nook per kilowatt hours. And uh, if you want to know the, know the price in euros, just divide it by 10 or use Google to convert it to your favorite uh, currency. And also, uh, if we assume that uh, some EV consumes 200 watt hour per kilometer, that's an average. Some cars, they consume more, some cars consume less, but you know, 200 watt hour per kilometer, you see that it will cost about one nook per kilometer. And then if you look at some diesel uh, at 15 nook per uh, liter, and let's say 0.5, I mean, oh, it was, I mean, it's five liters per hundred kilometer, then you know, the diesel is cheaper to run than electric. So what the heck is the point of uh, run, driving electric, right? Well, let's look at how it really works. So, uh, for example, if we would drive from Oslo to Trondheim, you guys know that stretch if you know my channel. Uh, let's take that trip with a Kona, 64 kilowatt hour. So the Kona, if we assume that it charges at home, it would be dirt cheap. Uh, we can assume about one nook per uh, kilowatt hour after charging loss. I think actually in most cases you, you, it will be cheaper than that and then of course in some cases in winter it will be more expensive. So I know that you can drive from Oslo all the way to Bajkok. I mean even if, if you drive with a hat you can almost drive that whole stretch without charging but let's assume you actually follow the speed limit plus VIT. Then you charge up at Bajkok okay and it takes you can you only need to charge 10 minutes and then you have enough juice to go to your destination. Uh, so we have to assume the old price here, 2.5 nook per uh, minute. Now it's 2.75. But um, then you see that if you add the numbers together, uh, and it would be only uh, 0.18 nook per uh, kilometer. And remember that diesel was 0.75 nook per kilometer. So you see, suddenly now, this is the reality that it's actually way cheaper to drive electric than uh, diesel. And okay, let's take another case then. What if you have an Ionic, lower, smaller battery, it's a cheaper car, right? Then you have 28 uh, kilowatt hours, and um, the first charging stop should be around Elverum after 145 kilometers. There you charge, but that's the low price, yes. So you charge for 20 minutes, and then you drive the next stretch, uh, you drive to Aldal, and you charge there, and there, that's where you have the high price. But you see that on the high price uh, area, you only have uh, you only have to charge 18 minutes. Uh, I think that's not even enough for a burger. You probably have to grab a hot dog, and then off you go to Bangkok to take your next stop, charging stop. But there, you are finally in that sweet zone where you have the normal price again. And then if you add these numbers together, you see that uh, the, the price is uh, 0.38 nook per kilometer. And compare that to diesel and Kona, and you see that it's still half the price of diesel. And it's still, you know, okay, it's, it's more expensive than Kona because with Kona, you have a bigger buffer from home, so you don't have to fast charge that much. But it's still way better than uh, fossil. So 
what the heck, what is, what, what's up with that? Um, I mean, in order for you to get the price, uh, that, that high price that I first uh, shown you, you have to start with an empty battery and then you have to go, no, it doesn't work. You, you have to live, you have to live in Österdal and only fast charge there. Then it would be expensive for you, but then, then you shouldn't drive an EV if you only have to base your driving on uh, fast charging. So, well, my numbers here are not just made up. It's actually based on real world experience. So, you know, I can back up my numbers. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, the price, uh, the price increase that they were talking about, that most people, they just bought it right away. You know, they, they believe in those numbers. They say that, oh, the price went up by 60%. It's not really 60%. Uh, in my calculations here, it went up by 17% only. And this is only the price component for charging. You also have, other components, you know, you have insurance, you have depreciation or loan or whatever, you know, all that stuff adds up. So the, the real increase is probably less than 5%, or maybe not even that. And especially if you don't drive in this stretch and you don't give a shit, right? <laughs> so, and also I believe that uh, you, most people, they can charge at home uh, about 90, 90%, uh, 90 to 95% of the time they charge at home. And that's where it's really cheap. And some people, they can also, charge for free at home, uh, maybe outside the home if they have these, uh, these public chargers run by the municipality, and then you charge for free, or if you have some free charging at work or whatever, so yeah. And that's the difference because fossil cars, they have to only refuel at the gas stations. There's no way for them to refuel cheap at home or something, you know? And there's no, as far as I know, there's no employee who will give you f free uh, diesel or whatever, you know, at work. <laughs> it doesn't work like that. You might get free coffee and newspaper, that's it. Okay, next case here is um, Netta Wiesen. So they wrote in January this year that um, charging at home was more expensive than diesel. And there's a picture of a uh, Model X charging there. Uh, but they based it on really high peak uh, price on electricity during winter. And also they claim that for short trips, you average 300 to 400 watt hour per kilometer. Uh, that sounds very pessimistic. Um, my experience is that um, you, it's, it's not that bad. It's, it should be around 200 to 300 watt hour per kilometer. Yeah, it depends again, but I mean, some people with Ionic say that ah, 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 it's way too high, man. And then some people with, with Model X say, wow, that's actually realistic. So, you know, average should be lower than that. But you know, it seems like net reason they took the worst case and they added it together and they twisted the story to make EVs really look bad. I'm not sure if it was on purpose or if they were noobs, we don't know. But, uh, you know, they, uh, Netta Wiesen didn't mention that fossil cars, when they drive on short trips, which actually happens a lot in winter, they consume about 10 liters per 100 kilometers, maybe even worse if you have a big gas guzzler. They didn't mention that at all. Yeah, they probably uh, assume that uh, these uh, fossil cars, they, they are very efficient in winter, but which is not the case. And also they have some numbers here They're showing uh, how how expensive it is to charge at home and then uh, fast charging. They also took the worst case where you have a cold battery and you charge at a slower rate. And of course that would be really expensive. And then they compare with fossil cars. And you know, right now it could look like fossil cars are cheaper to run than uh, than electric. But again, you know the previous case with the uh, Osterdal and Fortum that it's it's not like that. So let's look at how much it would cost per kilometer if you base this on a yearly basis. And if you assume that uh, someone will drive 20,000 kilometers per year, and we assume the 200 watt hour per kilometer average, then you see we need 4,000 kilowatt hours. And if you get 90% uh, of that from home charging, that's only 3,600 nook. And then the fast charging must come from somewhere. And based on the calculations, I averaged uh, four nook per kilowatt hours. It's, I think it's a fair price. And you see, we add up another 1,600 nook there. And the price per kilometer overall is actually 0.26 nook per kilometer. So it's, it's close to that example I had earlier uh, with Osterdon. And then, okay, uh, in this case, if we assume uh, six liters per hundred kilometers for a fossil, it's, it's 0.9 nook. So it, it could also be 0.75. But again, we have to take into account some local driving, which is uh, somewhat inefficient. Uh, uh, because, okay, some people, they, they will claim that, yeah, but I get a lower rate than that, uh, lower consumption. Well, but that's probably on a long trip and you don't only have long trips with your fossil car. 
And also, if we assume that uh, someone fast charges a lot for some reason, 50% of the energy comes from fast charging, it's still cheaper than fossil, right? And okay, I should also mention Tesla. Tesla is a bit special because they get um, good deals on uh, on the supercharger. And um, actually, it just happened to be that uh, the 400 kilowatt hour needed for fast charging, that's what they get for free. Or they might, the Teslas, they might have free supercharging anyway. So for Tesla, it's even better when it comes to that one. And also, well, it's one thing I didn't mention is that Teslas, they have more range. So it's higher chance that they, they can complete the trip without having to take a supercharger stop. And uh, we can also assume another case that um, if you can, some places, in many places in, in Oslo, uh, you can f uh, slow charge for free. The, the municipality, they have these uh, slow uh, 3.7 kilowatt um, chargers you can just charge for free. So then it's even better, but it's of course a little bit extra hassle that sometimes you might not get a spot or whatever. So again, okay. Um, and I could, uh, so I also mentioned the last case here about diesel, if you have uh, five liters per hundred kilometers, but you see that, uh, like I mentioned in previous case, you know, diesel or fossil will never be as uh, economical as uh, electric. Yeah. So um, just to wrap up here, um, you know, I base this on the mostly home charging. And I think that's the real case because almost no one will base the, the the energy from only fast charge I've, i met a couple of people at the supercharger but these are tesla drivers you know they for some reason they can't charge at home or whatever uh, i'm not sure what what was the deal some people they have a temporary solution so they have to fast charge but they, then they have um, they have supercharger uh, free supercharging whereas i haven't met someone with a with a leaf or some something like that who only fast charge you know it's a really rare case most people they can slow charge for a very cheap rate or even free. Um, and I think that journalists who made these, uh, these articles I mentioned, they, um, they don't know how stuff works. Or in worst case, they might even try to make up this story to make it look like EVs are really bad, you know? Because you and me, we are experts, kind of, right? So we know how shit works, but people who are thinking about uh, transitioning into EVs, they, they don't spend too much time uh, into all this. And when they read the headlines and they just briefly read the article, you know, it makes them, um, they, they might be pushed into the wrong direction, thinking that EVs are not that good after all, but it's not the case. So, you know, uh, my claim is that EVs, they will always be cheaper to run. Yeah, uh, they like the whole, it's just the whole fundamental thing that EVs, they can run on uh, electricity almost anywhere. And we have electricity, cheap electricity. And even, okay, I mentioned Norway, but even if this was in Germany or Denmark, uh, most people there, okay, I know that uh, fast charging in Denmark is really expensive, but uh, people there, they can charge at home. So, uh, and also that's kind of corner case. Uh, you also have uh, other countries, fortunately, with lower rates. So yeah, anyway, uh, I think that'll be it. So um, I hope this uh, video was useful for you. So as usual, thank you guys for watching and talk to you later.